Hello and welcome to Let's Play Knights of Honor with your host as always, Madrybred. Uh, in this game, we're going to be taking over all of medieval Europe. And uh, I've already picked what team I'm going to do this with. Uh, I want this to be something of a challenge run, going in with one of the weakest teams in Europe and conquering all of Europe. So I'll explain how to play as we go along. Uh, basically, you pick Europe starting in early, high, or late of medieval Europe. Uh, Europe is the only place in here with that in the very, very top of um, Africa. And the goal of the game is to either be crowned basically the leader of all of Europe, which to do it's basically have a lot of friends in high places and be a very powerful country. You can win by having an absolute monopoly on world resources, or at least European resources, and you can also win by um, by conquering all of Europe, which may be what we do. So the country I've decided to pick, uh, when I was thinking of what country to pick, I was thinking it's got to be one with only one city to start with. And although for a while I was thinking Jerusalem, because Jerusalem is the weakest team in the entire game, they have no unique units and only one city, they're not in a very dangerous spot, so what I decided, actually, is Switzerland. They have one city, they're completely landlocked, and they're next to Germany, and there's France right over here, the Pabasis blow me. There is a lot of stiff competition around Switzerland. So I think this will be a fun one. Let's conquer all of Europe. Normal difficulty. Let's do it. Now, I might go a little bit fast right at the beginning here, and rest. but I'll explain what I'm doing in one moment. Okay. By the way, you're gonna have to get used to that song. Alright, I'm losing gold. Uh, one moment, actually. I'm gonna go ahead and do a bunch of things and then explain what I'm doing afterwards so that we're not going into deficit. Uh, hey, Venice, you want a trade pact? There we go. I am at your disposal, my lord. There we go. That breaks even. Okay. Uh, what I just did there. The first thing I did was we had you always start with one marshal. This is your command. This is your royal court, and you always start with a marshal. So I just put him in the town so that he's not eating all of our. He's not wasting all the army's food sitting outside, and so he can relax in our only town. I told the people in the town to start building an inn. It's a very, very quick to build, easy building that you can build in towns. It makes the people in the towns happier, as well as giving you an extra worker. Workers being how quickly they build. So every tick that happens in the game, we get four points, basically, towards the 100 of getting this build. You can also rush it with money, but we, of course, don't have that kind of money right now. Uh, the other things I did was I saw that we were losing nine gold a turn. So what I did was I hired on, I had our king, our King Hugo, become a merchant for the royal court and start doing trade with Venice to get us some more income so that we're at least breaking even and now we're actually making a little bit of money. Uh, what buildings you start with is random as well as your town improvements on the natural resources. You can have up to three natural resources which let you get a few extra buildings. We are very, very fortunate, actually, that we started with a church. A church takes a while to build, increases the piety for monasteries, so our piety goes up faster, but the big thing is it writes books, and books are very important for educating the people of the royal court. So we're actually generating one book per tick, and that's a very, very strong start. Uh, our kingdom's piety, piety will almost never be a problem. That is how religious the people are. You require certain amounts for certain things. Uh, we are a Catholic nation by default, Switzerland. Which means our bonus, Your gold. our main bonus, is that we get 30% more gold. It is pretty much the most powerful religion in the game. A new building has been built, sir. And our inn is done. Let's get, uh, I would actually like to get a training grounds early. Training grounds don't do anything themselves. They're just a prerequisite for any kind of military building. Any kind of military building, rather, that trains units. So the other buildings that we started with is the town watch house, 
which gives us a few very strong elite guards in the event we're attacked. That's a nice one to start with if we have aggressive neighbors. The granary, which I might end up getting rid of at some point, because we only have so much room in a city. But uh, it makes it so we can hold 200 food in the city. It's good in case we get sieged, and also so we can train more troops, because troops require food. Toolsmithy is a really nice one. It's required for a few buildings, and it gives you an extra worker so you can build faster. Building fast is important. I already explained the church. I already explained the inn. I already explained the training grounds. We have marble deposits here, which allows us to make a quarry, which I believe makes the people happier and gives us marble. We have fertile soil, which means hemp uh, fields, vineyards, and... Apari? I've never tried to pronounce that out loud. Uh, that's a lot of natural resources, so that's nice. And mineral deposits are dye workshop and ink maker, so we can make a lot of luxury resources out of here. It'll make a lot of people want to trade with us. A big priority early on for me is your kingdom power. It goes from negative five to positive five. For a lump sum of gold and piety, although the, the more cities you own, the more piety it is, you can increase your kingdom power. That'll make the other kingdoms of Europe respect you more. You'll be in, held in higher regard. It'll also make the people of your country happier overall. It also increases your income. So kingdom power is something you want to get to five very early, especially if you're going to conquer a lot, because the more cities you have, the more expensive kingdom power becomes. Uh, this is a little news ticker down here. It lets you know the ongoings of Europe. It does not follow any historical set of, you know, what actually happened. So sometimes you see weird stuff going on in there. It's kind of one of the reasons I love this game so much. You'll see weird things like Poland has completely conquered Germany messages. I've just switched the map so that we can quickly at a glance see all the countries, although it does not say the name. Political view. This is the political view. This lets us see everything, and time is still passing while we, while we look at this. I actually want to look at relations. We are actually at war. It picks random neighbors to be at war with sometimes. We're actually at war with one of our neighbors. Can we have white peace? They do not want white peace. Okay. So we do have an aggressive neighbor who has one city. They do have inner walls, though. So that might be a little bit hard to siege if we want to siege them. For a trade resource, it looks like they have honey. And the leader is timid and religious. And we're the same religion, and he's timid, so he's probably going to be very hesitant to attack. Uh, they are not allied with anyone. They know that We know that they're earning more money than we are. Oh wow, they're earning 26 gold a turn. Okay. His Excellency the King and his most noble No wonder we are losing so much gold per turn. Our current king has no no economy sk skill, which means a lot less income. No espionage, so our spies won't be any good. But his religion, warfare, and diplomacy is all pretty good. He has two sons. His first son is garbage at everything but warfare. And his second son is just trash. Wow, we got unlucky. Good thing this guy's the heir to the throne. Now, normally when you hire people into your royal court, it costs a lump sum of a thousand gold, and then you need to pay their upkeep unless they're a merchant. However, members of the royal family don't cost anything to hire onto the royal we court. Built a new building, sir. So what we're gonna do... I am at your disposal, he's gonna govern our capital, so he can squeeze a little bit more out of the tax of the people to get us just a little bit more money which we desperately need, as we don't have the money we need to build more houses right now. Uh, what we want to do early on is actually start getting some military buildings. So, this is how the military works. There are the local units, which are units that can locally be made that are specific to this city. Uh, local special units, which are usually they are special units of the country that would originally be in this area and kingdom special units, which means no matter what city it is, if you are of the right kingdom, you can make it. So, uh, Switzerland only has one kingdom unique unit, and that is Helbradiers, which are very powerful. However, they're very, very expensive, and they require very advanced buildings to be able to train them. You need a Halberd, a Master Smithy, and a Plate Armorer. 
One thing I want to point out is they actually spelt Armorer with a U, but they didn't spell the title of the game with a U in honor. Probably to appeal to an American crowd, this is an English-made game. All right. My name is worth many bags. Of we don't have any other trade routes, so I actually want to find another small country who'd want a trade route with me. Papacy, would you want one? Oh, sweet, we got one for the Papacy. We're going to make some I money off the boat. Oh wow, yeah, he's orders. he's willing to give a lot of gold per turn. Okay, so we're making nineteen gold a turn. That's decent. So we want to get to work on. What do we want to get to work on? If we want, we do want a Hailbird Master Smithy and an, an armored, a plate armor, rather, very soon. So for a plate armor, we need an armory, which I believe is... Where is the armory? Armory is here. So all we need is the gold to make that, and then we can make the plate armor. So that takes up two slots. And we need a spear maker, and then we upgrade that into, into a Hailbert here, uh, Master Smithy. So it'll take three slots total per city that we want to make Hailbert ears in. We can also make a siege workshop, which is very, very nice. It lets us make siege equipment for getting over walls, getting around walls, sieging cities for the most part, which we're going to be doing a lot of, because I want to mostly do a military victory. And I actually want to leave a lot of this city for getting luxury resources, because the natural goods of this town are very good. Let's buy some kingdom power, actually. You have increased your kingdom power. And we're going to start using the plus and minus. Here we go, to speed up the game times eight. That's the plus and minus buttons on the number pad, mind you. This first episode is mostly going to be explaining how the game works, as well as getting our city set up. Now, we do have a threat of war at any point, because we are at war, and the only tr troops you can train right now without the proper buildings are peasants, which are very cheap, require almost no food. However, they have no, almost no morale. They break very quickly. They flee quickly. They're very weak. No armor. They are last resort troops, and they eat a lot of food because you need to get them in a large pack. So when you're on the march with peasants in your in your um, army, you'll run out of food and you can't march very very far before you need to stop off at a city. It has to be a city you own. Kingdom power has increased. It has to be a city that you own if you want to get more food. You'll notice that the workers are filling up above the city over time. The more buildings you have, the more slots you have for them. That's your population. And uh, every time you train troops, it uses up one of that population. There's no detriment to running out. However, uh, you do it's to keep you from just mass training armies. Just because you have the money doesn't mean you're, you're going to have the people. A pact of non-aggression. Mm, Germany just declared war on us. Probably because they want to take us over. And a pact of non-aggression from the papacy. I will do that because we are a Catholic nation. So we want to be in good standing with the Pope, and a pact of non-aggression with Vatican City helps. So we've just been called to war by Germany Political now. Group. So if we look at our relations map, Germany, who borders us, uh, basically almost all of our borders are uh, at war. Germany has a pact of non-aggression with Austria, so we can't expect any Lord, help. Enemy troops are marching through our lands. Okay, Germany's invading. This is a very early aggressive start for Germany. It looks like they backed off already. We're gonna go ahead and get the uh, Spear Maker building right now so we can train some proper troops. Mind you, spears are not great in melee combat unless they're fighting cavalry. They're mostly to deter cavalry. They can still fight better than peasants, though. So we might need to rely on that. I would also like a Fletchery. Now, local special unit here are crossbowmen, which are very powerful ranged units, because they can pierce armor a lot better than your average bowman. You require a Fletcher and an Armory. Now, we're going to be making an Armory anyway, so a Fletcher is only one more building to build, and is very useful because you do want ranged units backing up your army. So that's a wise investment. 
Right now, though, spears first. Because having all archers and no melee to tie them up is a death sentence. Although, having archers defend your city is very effective. We don't have any walls for our city, though. As you can see, it's just a town with a castle in the middle. We do have the watchtowers, however, we have nothing to keep the enemy armies out of the town, so if they attack... Sire, we have spotted enemy troops marching through our land. That was just some more German troops moving through here. Okay. We're about halfway done building that. I'm speeding Milord, things up a lot. Enemy troops are marching through our land. Looks like they're actually marching on the city now. Okay. I just filled the garrison with peasants. There. We used up everything we could. Used up all the food in the city. Training as many peasants up as we could to deter this army. It looks like it's a very weak army. Oh, uh, yeah. They've decided instead to start burning some of my farms. I'm going to have to let them do that for now. It will slow down the rate I can train troops, because they are starting to try and starve the city, and we do need to spend food to get troops. However, we can't engage in this fight quite yet. We have a very unskilled general. I'd actually like to get more trade routes going. He doesn't want one. He wants one. Okay. You're going to stop uh, governing. So we're going to recall the prince to have him start trading, because trading is usually worth the most money. You want to have a lot of merchants and get rich early. So he's finished bu uh, burning that. That will fix itself finished. over time, however, it will take quite a while. Okay, so we have two squads of spearmen trained up now in the army. Yes. He's going after the city? Okay, we'll meet him here then. And I would very much like to build more, however money is a little bit tight. So you know what we're going to... Oh no, he's going to go siege another... He's a sieging a village. Great. Uh, villages, until you have buildings like tax offices, a uh, village is just worth workers. So that'll slow down our building, having that sieged. Not much we can do about it right now, though. Right now, we just need to get our army ready. We do have a lot of troops. I just don't feel super safe about moving in and attacking him yet. At your service, sir. Oops, uh, not with Venice. We already have one with Venice. There we go. More gold per turn. Man, they're really trying to starve us. We actually have a decent amount of troops now, so let's As test the waters here. Sire, we have spotted enemy troops Are you kidding me? Our land. Okay, now you can lead the fight and go into kind of a Total War style fight, however, I've never been a big fan of that kind of fighting. I'd rather simulate it and have this be an overall bigger thing. Okay, they're going to join that battle. We actually need to call a retreat. Lost a and that does hurt the morale of the people in the province. However, if they're calling in two generals to fight me, uh, I'm not going to be able to fight that out on the field without my city to protect me. And we don't have nearly enough money to put up a wall. This is a very aggressive start by our enemies. Usually it doesn't quite go like this. Less happiness for a quarry. How do we want to handle this right now? A Fletcher would be very nice, actually. Let's do that. I'm building a Fletcher. It'll take quite a while, though. They're burning our cities. Or our towns, rather. Let's speed things up a bit and see what they decide to do. So one's burning more and the other one the is, is going to attack our city. Our okay. Well, we have them vastly outnumbered at the gate here, and they're not getting their other general to back Sire, them up. We have one about they actually just retreated. That's good, because that's experience for my general, as you can see there. Let's heal up the troops, costs a little bit of money. But we only had a victory there. Mm. They're attacking our villages more. They're trying to really starve us out. An alliance pact with the Papacy? Of course. That's good, we're getting on the Pope's good side. 
And we really need to get our kingdom power up. I want to be making a lot more money. They're trying to burn down every village we have connected to the city, and they almost have. In fact, unhappiness is becoming an issue because of it. Yeah, they don't like the plundering in the province. So what we're going to do is actually abolish tax. Because we're making almost no money off tax anyways because they're wiping out the population, so the abolishment of tax will make the people a lot happier. As you can see, they're at green 2, which is 2 happiness. Risk of rebellion, negative 2. Kingdom power okay, we've increased, increased the kingdom power to three. And we can get it to four fairly soon. And they're burning down the monastery. Are they coming after the city now? Yeah, it looks like they're going to. One of our towns yep. is under siege. Winning decisively, though. We have them vastly outnumbered in the city. Because we have the city garrison with us. Wealthiest ruler, Athens. My has increased. Awarded a glorious Not only did we just win, but our general leveled up and we captured the enemy. The first bonus that I want to give is actually tactics. Now that I am more skilled, I want to raise. That will be very good when we're sieging. Tactics is an ability that lets us build a, basically a fortified sieging camp that'll do damage to nearby enemies, and when they attack us, we have a huge bonus going into the fight. Uh, that will be a game-changer on the battlefield. So we have one of their generals in our prison, which does take up some room in the royal court. Call to arms. Really? They're going to attack? Under siege. They're uh, not exactly master strategists. Power. Victory, sire. Yes. Leveled up again? Okay. Gain another skill, leadership. You will not regret which is our the army he leads. Uh, the morale of the army he leads will always be one point higher on everyone, so they're less likely to break and be more effective in combat. We've just captured both of their generals, so our people can slowly get to work on recouping our losses. Now, those were both German. It's a French city. Both German. The German people aren't very happy right now. He's a militarist, of course. I actually want to make a, deman a demand of you. You don't have the gold. Okay. Uh, I want some prosperous land. Yeah, of course he'd say no. He probably thinks he's on the winning side of this war still, and to be honest, he is. Really, I was just in a good defensive position. Okay. We want to take this city next. Get rid of that war early, take a second city, and use that as leverage against Germany. We have built a new building, sir. We've finished the Fletchery, which is very good. However, I'm going to hold off on that for now. I'd actually like to get to work on an armory very soon. Although the kingdom power increase I might want to do... F no, I'll do the armory first. Because that'll take a long time to build, so I want to get that started early. Our books are already pretty good. At 400 books. Every time it gets to 1,000, we can educate one of our people to make them better at their job for up to five levels. The first one that I want to educate, because I am a, Christ a Catholic nation is I actually want to get a cleric and educate him to level 5, because that way when the pope dies, there's a good chance that my cleric will get elected the next pope. And having the pope be in your royal court is very good in diplomacy. Germany offers a ransom. There we go. I'll ransom him back, because that got me a kingdom solid 4,000 gold. Increased. And now we've maxed out our kingdom power. That'll really help offset the unhappiness, increase the tax rate a lot. We're making a lot of gold now for early on. Only have one city. And a peace treaty with you? No. Because uh, I'm going to take them over soon. Enemy troops have crossed our borders. Germany's coming in? Nah, they were just moving around there. Population's really getting back up. Which is nice. Halfway done building the armory. 
And I think that this is actually a good time to end the very first episode. We've gotten a lot done this episode. We have uh, vastly... We've, we've shown what the combat is like. We've pulled back from what could have been a very early loss. We we're in some very major wars. Being at war with Germany right now, who is a very big and very powerful country. Although France... Uh, as you can see there, France is actually taking a lot of land right now. France is becoming a mega power of Europe. And maybe the strongest one... Actually, Hungary and Lithuania are pretty huge. And Muscovy is very large, but Muscovy is actually a vassal, I believe, of Lithuania. Or perhaps the Golden Horde. Um, not just them walking around again. Okay. So this was a big first episode. If you guys have enjoyed the first episode and want to see more, a link in the description will be to the playlist of this entire Let's Play. Mm. Decline Ransom. I want to hold on to this general because it's wasting space on his royal court. Before we end the episode, I want to hire a cleric Good day, who will govern son. the city to help Behold, raise piety, enemy troops are marching through which our is, piety is almost never a problem in this game, we already have it maxed out at a thousand. But he's also helping increase the rate at which we get books. We're now getting, getting two books per tick. So that's doubling our writing rate, which is perfect. So, starting on the next episode, we're going to be doing long sessions of this game, breaking it up into 20 or 30 minute chunks. And um, until next time, have a nice day.